Hello folks, right I'm going to make this brief because I'm, uh, I'm getting eaten by midges already. Today we're shooting waterfalls, I'm, uh, I'm up the Langstrath Valley which is a place that's been to many times years ago but not so much in recent times. I did come here about 18 months ago to do some filming and I got completely rained off. Uh, I tried to come here again two, three days ago, way too much wind and also got drowned again. So I'm hoping today's going to be third time lucky. Uh, I've seen a couple of videos recently on YouTube from uh, other vloggers that have been here and it kind of jogged my memory into coming because, you know, as a local, I've been here a few times, but not very recently. So anyway, I'm going to get on up this path before I get eaten alive and uh, I'll catch up with you in a bit when I've uh, got a bit further along and hopefully got my first composition sorted. Okay, so we've made it down here, and uh, what a lovely little spot this is. I'll just um, just get settled here. We've got you. There we go. Okay, so we're we're here. What a lovely spot this is. Hopefully, you can hear me all right. The water's a little bit loud here. Um, I'm having a few issues getting this composition sorted. I'm just a little bit worried that the uh, weather water's funneling down here is going to be a little bit dominant in the scene it sounds a bit daft that given you know shooting waterfalls but i've just been playing around with compositions there i've took two or three in landscape and two or three in portrait just to give myself a few options here but as i say my main concern is that water in the foreground isn't too dominant what i'm also trying to incorporate is the the overhanging tree here it's got lovely shape to it and also making sure that I try and cut out the sky because even though it's overcast, it's quite bright and I don't want that intruding in the scene. Um, but as far as te technical aspects of this shot goes, I don't want the exposure going on too long. You might have seen some of my videos in the past where I've been shooting waterfalls and I've always said that I don't like to shoot really long exposures. These frames that I'm shooting here are around a fifth of a second. I think if it goes on any longer than a second, you just start to get this big sort of puddle of white and as I was saying there, I don't want that too dominant in the foreground but yeah, I'll just show you what I've been looking at in the camera here and you can get a better feel for what I've been doing. So we're in the camera here, set up in portrait. As I was saying there, the, uh, the portrait format just makes it a bit easier to incorporate this tree that's overhanging and then secondly, where the water is spilling out here what I want is a little bit of space at the bottom of the frame. You can just see here where we've got a little bit of room. I don't want the area that's part of the long exposure, which is obviously going to be a, a big blob of white. I don't want that coming to the frame edge. So just got a little bit of room at the bottom there just to give the whole thing a bit of, a bit of space. You don't want things too close to the frame edge, whether it's rocks or in this case, a big plume of water. But I'm going to shoot this one in portrait, do two or three at different shutter speeds to give myself a few options and work out the one that I think looks best. And then I'm going to take another couple in landscape that I can show you here. Similar sort of frame. Main concern, obviously, is these plumes of water in the foreground. I don't want them to be too dominant. With the landscape shot, I'm really concerned about the mid-ground. When I was stood up, a little higher we had a bit of a dead area in the in the mid-ground there so coming a little bit lower gives me a, a little bit of a better balance there we'll have to see how these turn out the light isn't uh, isn't overly grip you know you've got to work with what you've got and anyway i'll stop waffling on here they are on the screen
Right, I've just had to come back a little bit there because it is getting a bit loud and I'm just conscious that you can actually hear me. Um, after shooting that portrait shot there and, the, and also the landscape version of that wider scene, I've just come down the uh, down these rocks a little bit further and we've got this amazing little uh, like carved sort of semi-circular area in the rock and the water's obviously funneling down it. Took a few wider ones there as well, just similar to what I was doing before. But also, I think I'm actually preferring this slightly more intimate close-in shot. So I've got the 24 to 200 on and I'm zoomed all the way in. I think it's about 150 millimeters, something like that. And same again, slow shutter speed, about a quarter of a second, something like that. I've got the polarizer on just to take off some of the glare and uh, just bring through some of those colours underneath the, the water. And I'm, I think I'm preferring this one, to be honest, but we'll have to see how it turns out anyway. I'll put these on the screen. I need to get going because I was just looking at the clock there. And uh, I've spent a lot more time here than I was planning on doing. It's, uh, it's about two hours to sunset, so I need to get my skates on and get up to the main set of waterfalls that I wanted to shoot. So, right, I'll catch you in a bit. Okay, welcome back folks. I must learn to not bellow into the microphone. I got that audio back from that first bit that you've seen and a lot of it's clipping. So I've had to readjust the mic set so I'll try and talk a little quieter. Uh, yeah, so you might have noticed different day, different outfit. Of course, as is customary in this country, you go from 11 degrees one day to the start of a heat wave the next day, which is what we've got. I'm having to come out uh, the next day because as I mentioned, I left it a bit tight for time. And I thought by the time I get up to this place that I was gonna shoot, I'd have barely had any time there to be honest before sunset. So come back the next day and gonna have a little crack at it. Totally different conditions. It's uh, sun splitting trees at the minute. As I say, start the heat wave apparently. So I think this next week, I'm gonna do my best to try and get out after work, up a couple of fells while the weather's really nice. So it's gonna be a week of vlogging, I think. But for now, I'm on my way up to this lone tree at the sort of, well, it's only about a third of the way up Langstrath. And I'm looking at the river and already even in the space of 24 hours, the water looks a, bit, a fair bit lower. So I may have to come back here when the water's a bit higher. But anyway, I'm going to get cracking up here and put some more smidge on. Because the uh, midges are out in force. The bit that I've put on seems to be doing the trick so far, but I don't trust it. I'm going to put a bit more on, I think. So anyway, I'll catch you in a bit. Right folks, I recently invested in the DJI Action 2. I'll tell you what, the amount of DJI gear I've got, they should bloody sponsor me. Uh, yeah, for a little bit of POV style filming. Uh, so I'm just looking at this first composition here. 
I think this would work in landscape and portrait. We've got this lovely sweep of the water coming down here. I just need to figure out if I'm going to place the tree dead in the centre or off to one side. I'll, I'll have a little play with that, but this nice little sweep here works pretty well, I think. So we can count this as a composition that I think will work. We'll, uh, we'll head on to the next spot and do a little bit more exploring. So this is spot number two. Now, this would seem the most obvious place to take a shot from, given this is the most prominent part of the waterfall. But the one thing that's bugging me about this composition here is that the tree is just slightly overlapping the mountains behind from here. And it, it's very difficult to get the tree in a in a pleasing composition uh, without compromising the angle of the waterfall. So as nice as this is, I'm not sure that this will work particularly well. I think I'm gonna stick to the first composition that I looked at and go with that one because really I'm, I'm not sure this fits my eye, to be honest with you. Also, what isn't helping this composition is is this area here which is all exposed rock i would imagine normally when this is in spate there'll be water coming over all this as well so i think this composition down here works much better when there's a fair bit more water in the uh, in the river although in saying that looking at this there's, there's still a decent amount in here tonight so hopefully we're going to get a decent shot here the uh, clouds are a bit nondescript at the minute but hopefully they, they might fill in we've got a little bit of time so let's go and get set up with that first shot Okay, after much mulling about, I'll just take you down to what I'm shooting here. Um, yeah, bit of a tricky one, this, this place to shoot. It, need, it definitely needs more water in it. Um, although there's, there's a decent amount tonight, it, there's plenty to work with here. But for the type of compositions that I want, particularly trying to fit this tree in the composition, I'd like to be further to the right, but because the water levels are starting to drop off now, there isn't any water filling in that side of the frame. So it's going to have to be a case of coming back here when the water levels are a bit higher. Uh, but for now, uh, I'll just show you what I'm shooting here. So, as you can see here, we've got this nice... Uh, let me just get me in the shot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as you can see, we've got this nice S-curve leading down into the foreground. And then, similar to what I was doing in the first part of this video, the bit at the bottom of the frame, I just want to leave a little bit of space for where the, the plume of, of water is. I don't want that big area of white touching the frame edge, so it's just got a little bit of room. Placement of the tree, it's not perfect, it's a little bit of a compromise. I was, as I was saying there, I'd like to be further to the right, but, you know, you can only work with what you've got. I think I'm not going to, well, I know I'm not going to move from this spot because really having had a walk further down to the lower section I don't think there's, there's anything down there that's going to work so I'm going to hang around here the sky's a little bit blank at the minute but you know what can you do hopefully a little bit of cloud drifts across before sunset and it it fills in that gap and uh, and we get a nice bit of colour Okay, I think I'm going to admit defeat with this one because looking at this sky, I don't think it's going to do anything. Um, yeah, what can you do? Want to come back to in better conditions and all that. Uh, one thing I will do with this shot though, I think, is convert it to black and white because when you've got blank blue skies like this, it can be quite effective to bring the luminance of the blue right down and you get that really contrasty black and white look. So. I'll probably look to do that with this image, although let's be honest, it's 
probably a bit of a salvage job but there you go brilliant walk up here anyway really enjoyed it tonight uh, and I think for the rest of this week with this heat wave coming I'm going to get up the mountains I think because it's uh, never a better time to get out and do some fell walking when it's like this I've got unfinished business with Red Pike above Buttermere uh, you won't have seen a well a video that was meant to come out last year but it was a complete audio fail um, but yeah I'd like to get up there and get a specific shot uh, for the gallery at uh, sunset so hopefully that'll be the next video and uh, stay tuned for that so anyway I'm going to finish this one here so keep liking and subscribing and I'll catch you on the next one <laughs>